us because we are terrible at setting up a WordPress website, but I think that's the whole reason why. So I think, um, uh, firstly, nice to meet you. I'm Wheeling, and I'm a co-founder of the website Taobao Hacks, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. So firstly, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to attend my talk at 10 in the morning. It's an ungodly hour, especially on a Saturday. Uh, so... I think what Lester wants is maybe to make people who are a little bit more comfortable with the idea that it is possible for a tech idiot like me to set up, if it's possible for me to tech, for a tech idiot like me to set up a website on WordPress right, and serve it on my own, then I'm pretty sure that most people can do it. So I'm, I'm here to share my experience with you. And um, I come from an advertising background, actually. So even if this talk is not going to be very useful for you, I'm pretty sure it will be entertaining. <laughs> okay, so um, to introduce, uh, who is talk about Hex? I mean... Um, Honestly, not a lot of people know about us. The people who really, really do know are the ones who are already quite interested in shopping on the Chinese website. But if you do not know about Taobao, um, honestly, it, you, you, should, you should try shopping on the site. It's now the second biggest website on the world for e-commerce next to Amazon. And in fact, I'm pretty sure Jack Ma is going to overtake him at some point. Uh, so the story behind our website is quite interesting. Um, it, okay, so... Our website is about how to basically sh hack your shopping experience on Taobao, i.e. we help you find the best deals. And speaking of China, the story is actually a little bit ironic because... Okay, to introduce about me, I'm really, really bad at speaking Chinese. That's me around 15 years old. And I remember when I was in my class in secondary three, I remember sitting at the back of the row and wondering like, oh, how come this teacher keeps calling this girl's name but she doesn't reply? Then I was like, oh, she's in for, she's in for, she's in for trouble, she's going to get scolded. And then the, all of a sudden, like a duster came right next to me. And I was like, oh, she's calling my name. So at 15, I realized that my name is Weiling and not Weiling. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how bad my Chinese is. So you must be wondering, like, what the heck is this girl doing shopping on the Chinese website? So fast forward to 2015, I actually joined a local advertising agency called Good Stuff. And I meet this awesome guy called Josh. And we, both of us, start getting very interested in Taobao because we realized that a lot of our friends had started furnishing their houses at them. Yeah, we're at the age where there are people are getting married and uh, buying their own HDB flats. So we, we kind of got excited and uh, he decided to actually experiment on his own house and furnish everything in his home using Taobao. So you can see that he's actually been really successful at it. Everything that you see in this picture was purchased on Taobao. Then we realized being content marketers and being um, people who are in advertising, right, that actually this content could be really, really useful for other people as well. And why not share it on the website and see what happens? And also because most of the time when you're in advertising, right, most of your ideas don't really get, don't really happen because clients don't really buy into them. So we thought that this is a great way for us to like, oh, let's run our own Facebook page and do what we want. Uh, so he's shopping on Taobao was very successful. Uh, so we were inspired and basically we set up Taobao Hacks. Okay, so our first home on WordPress um, it was, it was not self-hosted at all because we honestly were too lazy and we were not sure where we were going with the website. We just wanted to do it for fun, so it was like very minimalist. We just got a simple template and we set it up easily. But the problem was that the HTML would then say WordPress.com, so in a way you can't really personally brand the HTML. Yeah, but you can see that it, it's very functional and it still works. But then. Um, we started to realize that our content was getting a lot of traction and we were getting a lot of traffic. So this was one of the posts that I don't understand why, but Singaporeans really love when we write about stationery. It kind of crashed the website a little bit because it got shared about 3,000 times on Facebook. So we realized that, oh, we need a bigger house. So then we decided to upgrade our, our, our WordPress subscription to uh, a US 825 per month premium plan, which worked for, for the, the time being. So what it gave us was, it gave us a bit of command control, uh, flexibility over how our design website is seen, and the ability to store plugins, which basically allow us to install analytics. So instead of just looking at the WordPress analytics itself, you could now have Google Analytics Insights, which is awesome, right? But actually, the fact was that we realized um, there were some limitations uh, when you don't self-host your own website. So we decided, you know, let's try, let's try and go pro since we have enough people who are visiting our site to, to attract advertisers. So we started to wade into the big scary world of self-hosting, which is why Lester started receive, receiving a lot of um, frantic calls in the middle of the night 
where we, where we make mistakes setting up our website. Uh, so you can see that the site looks a lot more different now. There's a lot more detail and a lot more control in what you can put on the website. Yeah, so we customized it a bit and we, we bought a, a proper template. Okay, so to share our experience, uh, I'll just say that it definitely comes with its own challenges and my advice to you is the number one thing is that servers like? are very complicated business. My advice is that dogs start the video now. Ah, we should. That's just been going on for 20 minutes. Kieran went down and offered to park it. Kieran offered to park it and she was raging that we were laughing at it. For us, we're using Vodian and they help us to sign up for like a basic. Check that black car three times. Then we, of course, engage a tech expert to carry out the full migration. Yeah, so. Um, the other thing is when you when you do self hosting, right? You realize that it's, it's almost like you stop renting a house and you start you purchase your own house, right? So now you have to care about the locks and whether it's secure or not. So in in actual fact, when you self host, uh, you have to purchase something called an SSL, which is a secure socket layer certificate. Yeah. So what what happens is um, once you find a SSL provider, you just purchase an SSL and then you pass it to your service provider, which is for us it was Vodian, and then they basically do the installation for you. Yeah. So all you need to do after that is to install the plugin, and then it will redirect users who land on HTTP to HTTPS, which is important for you if you are, especially if you are doing commercial sales on your website. Yeah. Because no one is no one can shop on a site that is not HTTPS. So just to explain a little bit about SSL uh, in my own in my own colloquial terms, it's like almost like a secret handshake between the people who visit your website and the website itself. So if you don't know the handshake, right, then there's no way that you can enter the conversation. So it's very secure. Um, the third thing is that I would definitely say uh, pay more attention to your Google Analytics or risk crashing your website because we actually crashed ours twice. So what I regret not doing um, is that yeah we we had a lot of lost traffic because some of our Articles actually did really well, but the, because the server couldn't support it, we, we see tons of complaints. <laughs> and then we had to get very creative with our apologies. So I would actually say go into analytics and start exploring all of the tools because even though the interface looks a little bit intimidating at first, the knowledge that Google provides is fantastic. And they actually provide very, very good advice on how to optimize your website. So they even have a page on like page speed insights and they run you through why is it important and what you should do to optimize it. And they give you a step by step of are you doing well? Is your mobile site loading fast or is your desktop loading fa site loading fast? And then they provide a step by step of what you should do like to optimize, which is really good. So we've been we've been trying to do a lot of that. Um, the fourth thing would be upgrade your hosting plan. I mean, it's very self-explanatory uh, and it's usually a good sign that you're getting a lot of traffic. So we basically got Vodian to upgrade our plan from basic web hosting to a business hosting plan. Yeah, and fifth thing is definitely an enable caching. So what is caching? Um, it basically gives your web page a super fast response time without having to do time consuming process each time a page loads. Yeah, so what we did was to install this plugin that was called uh, WP Super Cache. So in detail, it actually generates static HTML files from your dynamic WordPress block. And then after the, you have that file, right, the server will basically serve the file instead of continually processing heavier and more expensive WordPress PHP scripts. Yeah, so it will lessen the amount of data that your website has to load and your website is less likely to be overloaded, like what happened to us when we crashed our site. Yeah. The sixth thing is like like I said, it's like moving out your parents' homes to watch your own back. We installed uh, security plugins like WordFence. In fact, once you once you move to self hosting you realize that you get a lot of spam from a lot of people which you don't really experience when you do a when you're on WordPress.com. Yeah. So um, being for advertising, my advice to you is that you can't actually monetize what you can't measure. So definitely a hosted site gives you the ability to do that in spades because when you can customize how you want to insert your tracking codes on you, uh, using Google, it means that you can, you can track um, the sales funnel and how people interact with your website and then start selling that information back to people who need it like advertisers. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty important for a retail site, I would say, as covered by the previous speaker. Yeah. So in conclusion, Yes, it's the end of the talk already, yes. Uh, so self-hosting isn't actually that scary, but you do need a bit of patience, especially if you're someone who's completely 
inexperience in terms of coding, uh, which was us. Uh, but if your business is growing and you need more customization and control, I definitely say that you have to upgrade to WordPress.org eventually because you get a lot more options, you get control. Um, but is it for everyone? I wouldn't say so because um, WordPress.com is basically for people who have no tech background, have no interest in uh, investing time to figure out things. So the business plan actually covers the basic needs of a very small and young business. So if you're maybe testing out an idea of a website that you want to do, right, but you don't want to invest too much money into it, I definitely say that just go for the, the simplest plan to see whether your idea works first and then think about whether you want to upgrade it. Thank you. So no questions, right? Thank you. Um, do we have questions from the floor? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, right. So tell us what you find the right moment to switch from hosted to self-hosted. We we didn't really find the right moment. The right moment found us when people uh, just kind of started interacting with our content. So we realized that we actually had an audience out there, and um, it was time for actually for us to become more legitimate in that sense. Yeah, that that was the moment, I guess. <laughs> No more business? Great, thank you. <laughs>